Have you ever stopped to think about how do you learn and remember? You have some idea that is associated with stuff going on in your brain. This is material that I learned some at a presentation for teacher training. And the three ideas that we'll look at today are what happens inside your brain when you learn? What are some brain friendly ways to learn better? And how does homework help your brain? Let's start by considering something that you are good at. It could be playing a musical instrument, some sport, maybe some kind of craft, cooking, fixing things, hunting or fishing. You had to learn how to do it and think about what was the process like to learn how to do that thing. For me, at some point around my 20s, I really wanted to learn how to water ski. And the only person I knew that had a motorboat was my uncle. So I'd have to beg him to take me out and try to let me get up on those skis. And I remember it took me nine or 10 summers of trying. I remember how frustrated and tired I would get. But I learned how to do it. And then I learned how to drop a ski. And then I learned how to get up on two skis. And I can still ski today. So at the beginning, it was really hard and really frustrating. And now it's a lot more fun. Consider the fact that everyone learns. It's not some magical, weird process. Everyone learns something. And the normal learning process is starting out as a novice, gaining some competence with practice, with feedback, and time. Uh, that's the way we learn how to walk. That's the way we learn how to speak. It can be both scary and fun to go through the process. And our brains actually really like learning. We mostly can learn what we need to learn, even if we don't become a master of everything. And that's okay. The bottom line is you can learn. We will talk about this more later in the semester, but the idea of mindset is very important to learning. And one way to think about this is that there's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And it can also be very context specific. Sometimes you may have a growth mindset where other areas you don't. But the growth mindset is always thinking about how can I learn? I can learn more. I can do more. I can practice more. It never settles for saying, I'm bad at this or I'm good at this. Learning how the brain learns can help people move from the fixed mindset about math to a growth mindset about math or any other topics you may be wanting to learn. So what does happen inside your brain when you learn something new? This is your brain. Brain cells are called neurons. They often have a shape like this. The middle part is the body of the cell and the things coming off are called dendrites and those are all the things that make connections in your brain. Dendrites will grow out of the neurons and make connections with other neurons whenever you listen to something, when you write about something, when you talk about something, when you learn something, when you practice something, when you're spending time on your phone. Dendrites are growing and pruning every day. That means your brain is changing every day. Another thing for you to know is that learning is natural. Your neurons know how to grow dendrites and make connections, just like your stomach knows how to digest food. You don't have to teach it how to do that. It's always happening. And the process of learning is simply the growth of the dendrites. Like anything that's growing, growing new dendrites takes time. And it takes lots of practice to grow something new and to strengthen those dendrites. Everybody is growing and pruning new dendrites every day. So think about all the things that you repeat either in thought or in deed or in word. Those are the kind of things that are strengthening the dendrites inside of your brain. So part of the learning process is the growth of the dendrites, but it's also the connections that these dendrites are making with other neurons. So let's look at that part a little more specifically. When the two dendrites are growing close together, they're going to have a small space that connects the two of them. And there's always a gap there, and it's called the synapse. So that when messages are traveling down your dendrites, when your dendrites are communicating with each other, or the nerve cells are communicating with each other, the electrical impulse will go down and then chemicals get released to move from one side to the other. And that's how the messages travel. 
So anytime you want to move your arms or legs or think thoughts about things, it's happening when chemicals are moving across one side of a nerve cell to another. Neurons have many connections. A single neuron, remember that's one brain cell, can have more than 10,000 connections. Brains, remember, have over 1 billion neurons. How many connections is that? Now, the chemicals that carry the messages across the synapse, that little space in between the two nerve cells, are called neurotransmitters, also abbreviated NT. They're the things that carry messages across the synapse. Myelin is amazing. So one other specialization that happens when you are practicing and using particular connections a lot is this protective fatty sheath kind of grows around the dendrite and then it has little spaces in between each one. That allows the nerve signal to jump from space to space to space so that it can travel a lot faster. So as you're learning, you're going to look like that nerve cell on the left. It's taking a long time maybe for you to do any particular problem and by the time you're reaching the end of the course, this is how fast you're going. Myelin can increase the processing capacity by 3,000%. So there's a kind of a lot going on when you practice. The contact area of the synapse becomes wider and more neurotransmitter can be stored there, so it's easier for messages to get across. So more practice, easier for the message to cross from one nerve cell to the next. You can get double connections when you're practicing. So now it's easier to cross and it can cross twice as much. The myelin starts to grow, so it's easier to cross. You have double or triple connections and they're going even faster. That's why once you become a master of something, it becomes so much faster and easier for you to do it. Here are some pictures to help illustrate what happens. This is a picture of a neuron before training began. After two weeks, notice there are so many more connections. And after one month of practice, look at all the connections there are there. And the fibers are thicker and everything is going faster and better. There are two more things I want to touch on. First of all, short-term memory is very short. If you learn something new and you only do it once or twice, that new connection is so fragile it disappears within hours. Within 20 minutes you only remember 60% of what you learned. Within 24 hours you only remember 30%. Once you stop practicing, walk out of a classroom, uh, leave the video for online environments, within 20 minutes you're only going to remember 60% of what you were doing. Now the good thing is, if you practice again within 24 hours, and then practice again, you can remember up to 80% of what you learned. What's another brain-friendly way that you can make the most of your learning time? Keep in mind that you grow dendrites exactly for the thing that you are doing. So if you spend most of your time in class simply taking notes and writing things down perfectly, you are growing dendrites for that. If you start practicing doing the problems, you're growing dendrites for doing those problems. So given that short-term memory is very short and that we grow dendrites or nerve cells or we remember and learn mostly what we do, Think about what are some things you can do to make the most of your class time and your practice time.